I'm talking today to Dr Byron Wood, who has spent a lot of years living in Africa. He's travelled around the world and very recently he spent his summer in Costa Rica. And he, you might already know that he has a PhD in studying butterfly populations and communities. And so today I just wanted to ask him, how would he start to introduce topic from chapter 16? Um, well, you know, as, as you said, I studied butterflies for a long time, and so I was studying a butterfly community rather than one species of butterfly. I was looking at uh, different communities, uh, a range of species um, that some lived and uh, fed in the forest canopy, some on the forest floor, um, but that uh, community in the rainforest is composed of everything that interacts with everything else. So from algae to plants to trees to insects um, and to uh, primates um, is all part of that community. And that's an interesting point, Byron, because when we're talking about a population, we're generally talking about one species in one place. But when we're talking about a community, we're talking about all the species living in that place. So, yes, yeah, so an ecosystem is, is everything uh, that's living and non-living, uh, biotic and abiotic factors um, that is where the community exists um, would be the ecosystem. Um, the community would be the living part of that. Okay, well. so that's the biotic. And then can you give me some, an example of some abiotic? So the abiotic factors um, would be things like amount of rainfall, uh, humidity, pressure, temperature, water temperature, um, things along that line. Within the chapter, it, within the double page spread, it starts to talk about interdependence. And in the simplest sense, we know from year seven, we've been talking about food chains. So we know that we depend on other organisms. But what other things could we look at when we're talking about interdependence? Well, yes, in, in the, uh, interdependence um, relates to that food web, as you, as you were mentioning and if a certain element is removed, we don't know what impact that will have on the rest of uh, the food web or the rest of the community. Um, in Costa Rica recently, um, we came across three-toed sloths and two-toed sloths, which are amazing creatures who, have, uh, who look green. When you're close up, they look green because they have this symbiotic relationship with algae that grows on their fur. And that algae is there to uh, camouflage the sloth, so it's important for the sloth. But it also is important because the sloth um, helps its digestion by feeding on the algae. And it also provides food for several other organisms which live in the sloth's fur. There are a couple of species of tick, uh, a couple of moth species, and a beetle species. And the, the sloth lives in the forest canopy all the time and it will come down to uh, go for a poo oh. only oh, <laughs> only once a week and it comes down to the bottom of the uh, tree um, it defecates at the bottom of the tree in the same place every time and some of the beetles jump off to feed on the uh, excrement and then either jump straight back on or maybe they feed for a week and wait for the sloth to come back down to poo again and jump on. So there's a whole community just living on a sloth. Let me get this right. Beetles on the sloth, jump off the sloth, feed on its poo, jump back on, go back up the tree with the sloth. There you go. And the other thing that you just said as well, the algae help the sloth's digestion what, when they lick their fur or something? That's it, that's it. So they eat uh, one type of leaf, a cecropia leaf, uh, which can be quite indigestible. Um, but by eating the algae, I, I don't know why, but that helps uh, in that digestion of the strong cellulose inside the sacrophyll leaves. People pay good money for that these days, those probiotics mm, and prebiotics, eh? So that's really interesting. And um, then it starts to talk about stable communities. Well, aren't all communities stable? I mean, what are they actually talking about there? 
So, um, so you're right. Um, a, a community is stable at any moment in time, but through uh, succession, through uh, years of um, a um, ecosystem being there, it becomes more stable, and it becomes unstable. Uh, when a hurricane blows through and opens up lots of gaps in the canopy um, or there's excessive rainfall or maybe a fire um, and then the community is very unstable lots of pioneer species will come in to, uh, to grab that opportunity of uh, light and uh, space on the forest floor and uh, things will develop from there um, Brilliant. So just to recap, a community is different from an ecosystem because a community is all the living things, is all the populations living in that place at one time, whereas the ecosystem also encompasses the abiotic factors such as mineral content, pH content of the soil, weather, other climatic factors. And then the other thing we talked about was interdependence and how it's all in a big balance and if you shift one of them, actually a few years ago I went to a science fair and I saw this really effective demonstration. It was um, like tin cans, like your tins of beans and they were all piled up on each other in a big pyramid and it was a classic example that if you remove one thing it just throws everything out of balance and the whole thing came crashing down. It was really effective.